Either for those. Do you remember those experiments where we were using PVC pipes to make prop shafts and whatnot? Well, I've seen plenty of folks in the comments suggesting we try suspension links out of PVC pipe. Well, it sounds like a cool idea, but there's stuff to consider that we really haven't, I mean... They are pretty flexible, but they should still have plenty of tensile strength. And here we have some lovely suspension links of the type you'll find in this car. They obviously vary in length. So I suggest we start by making links, figure out how they perform, what sort of uh, stress they can handle, whether they'll even work in the first place. Then we draw some conclusions and decide whether we can use PVC pipe to make suspension arms. Let's do this. Originally uploaded in 2022. Check out these lovely links that we've made. We've soldered everything together. The shorter ones are very rigid, no surprises there. But even the pannered rod, I mean, I am able to bend it. But it's a long piece and it's not supposed to resist bending anyway. It's meant to compress and rebound. Now to build in some extra durability, we decided to go with a double pipe. We slipped one pipe into the other one, and it is a tight fit. And with a smaller pipe slipped into the big one, the assembly becomes way less flexible. But now we install the suspension links and go try the suspension out. See how durable these links are, how they behave. Here we have the car. We've already removed the old suspension. Now we just need to install the PVC links and, oh yeah, almost forgot to mention, the bushings are also custom. We made them out of reinforced rubber hose and they also have layers to them. We'll then fit metal sleeves, bolts, maybe even skip the sleeves altogether. Now it's all a matter of throwing everything together and going for a test drive with go. And there they are, the new suspension links are a great fit. The trailing arms are especially rigid. The pannered rod, yeah, it's very long. And the PVC pipe is a bit wobbly. Even though we've slipped a smaller tube into it, it's still quite bendy. But hopefully it's able to hold up. Now the thing about this pipe, uh, we've soldered the hell out of it and it should keep itself from ripping apart. As for compression, that remains to be seen. For starters, we might want to keep all of our turns left, but then we can go right, forward, backwards. But yeah, let's do this. Terrific. We are good to go. Tubes are getting caught. Uh-huh. We are moving. So far, so good. Excellent. So are the PVC suspension links working, or are they not? So far, they're working great. I'm not even all that worried about them failing. 
taking it easy. Let me grab second. Car is moving, though that... I suspect this car might be running that differential which is on its last legs. Okay, well, if that's what we got... Right hand U-turn. Everything is in one piece, very good. Moving along, doing well. So far, so good. We are doing fine. I mean, the suspension links are quite happily keeping it together. Though they haven't been subject to any massive stresses. I reckon they'll continue working just fine. Because tearing apart this sort of pipe can't be easy. Now let's try this beat up road. Careful driving off the slab. And we're good to go. Approaching an incline. And let's see. Driving uphill will certainly increase the stress levels. Here we go. Going uphill. Nice, just terrific. They've held up, excellent. So we did have some rain, we've got puddles on the road. Which is less than ideal. I wouldn't want to get anything dirty, especially the cameras, but then no big deal. There are quite a few bumps on this road. And we're good, terrific. Driving in a straight line, we can wind up... God knows where. Nothing horrible is happening to them. They're just not under enough stress for them to fail. We can drive in a straight line all the live long day, but I think it might be time for a bit of, um, sideways action, so to speak. To begin with, I'll be taking it easy. Now we can go a bit faster. And even faster. Terrific. And a bit faster. They're holding up, look at that. I've got understeer. <laughs> what, did that scare you? They're doing just fine. They're happy and I like that. What if I drive straight? The pannered rod was just getting stretched out. Let's see. That PVC pipe must have been under severe stress with that hard launch. We are about to see how they're fearing. But judging by how much the axle is moving around, I think something might have broken. But let's have a look. 
No, actually, I don't see anything horrible from over here. What if I take a look from over here? No, we're good. It's just that those custom hose bushings have been slightly displaced. The pipes are intact, though. Which is awesome. All right, then. I was just circling towards the left to stretch out the pinner rod. I guess now I should drive clockwise for it to compress. I don't get why it was both, though. I am positive that I just saw... Um, the axle shifts at first, and then it stabilizes. Prop shaft is where it's supposed to be. Is the axle shifting? Can you see the axle shifting around? No? I didn't see anything. Are you saying... No, they ain't breaking. Let me go for a drive. He said they're not breaking, let me have a go. Oh, Sergey. Let's see what happens. The cameras that are placed down there have surely got a good view of what's happening. Like a bow, you say? Axel poking out, you say? Like by this much? Holy cow, well, let me see for myself. I am super curious to see what that looks like. I'll start by taking it easy. Uh-huh, sure. Otherwise, he'll break it right away, yum. Oh, you can see it quickly loading up. The reason that's happening is... because... Traction is unstable. And that affects the load. Yeah, it is bending. But otherwise it's holding up, the axle is staying in position. So it doesn't mind stretching out. Yeah, amazing, right? These PVC pipe suspension links are quite a nifty thing, aren't they? They're easily handling this res. Now let's try the other way to stretch it. Try the other way. What, did you forget? It was just compressing. Even after hitting the edge of the slab, it just doesn't care. This is just something else. That was the differential making noise. It's totally normal. Let me try going through here. Going over some bumps. Let's see what happens through here. But after the stress test we conducted back there... I don't expect anything to go seriously wrong while we're going over this terrain. The links are working and doing a terrific job. These bumps are just child play. These pipes are ready for anything. Uh-huh. 
No, the rear axle is wobbling. Oh, wait. Look at it jumping around. Check it out. And I thought the diff was making so much noise. When is the prop shaft rubbing the underbody? I think we might have broken something. Let's investigate. And so here's the situation. The links have survived, but the makeshift bushings have taken a bit of a beating. We did make them out of rubber hoses, but that's what was causing the axle to move around. The prop shaft was even hitting the tunnel. But the curious thing is that everything worked. The suspension links held up just fine, and that is awesome. But while we were doing donuts, something happened to the shocks. Look at the floor, they've both developed a leak. Leaky bowel syndrome, apparently. The pinnered rod is fine, but look at the axle moving around. That's when it's being compressed. Obviously, when getting stretched, it held up fine, I mean... After all, it was under... considerable load. But at the end of the day, the PVC pipe held up. Now, I should say that I noticed while I was driving around that when maneuvering, even when trying to drive around bumps, I was feeling that the panned rod was twisting, unsettling the car, but that was to be expected. Also, it's warm outside. In minus 30 degree cold, they might have even snapped. But in those conditions, you'd also have snow and ice. That means less traction. And as a result, not nearly as much stress. I guess if you're trying to turn in a really deep groove, you might break the panned rod. But I wouldn't be surprised if it even held up in the winter. So I think we should leave these on until the winter, just in case. In case we decide to repeat this experiment in minus 30 degree weather. But you saw it all for yourselves, and these suspension links have uh, held up, amazingly enough. Wow, these pipes are durable. Modern technologies are nothing to sneeze at. But that's all I got for you. Watch us, consider subbing, send in your suggestions of this nature. Comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.